Harun, Harun, please. Okay. You can start. Okay. So, uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Professor Jean-Michel Coron. And uh, as you have probably seen in the webpage, uh, Jean-Michel studied at the Ecole Polytechnique. This is a famous school in around Paris. And he first worked in the field of nonlinear functional anal analysis. Since the er early 90s, he studied the control theory of finite dimensional system, as well as PDEs, including uh, controllability and stability, stability issues. Uh, his results put a strong emphasis on nonlinear phenomena, and some of them found real application, for instance, in the control of, of channels. I think that he will speak about a bit about that today. Jean-Michel has also been awarded of numerous uh, uh, prizes, such, such, that the, such as the Fermat Prize in 93, the Dargelos Prize in 2002, the Isiam Maxwell Prize in 2015, the WT and Italia Red Prize, Dargelos Prize in 2002, the Isiam Maxwell Prize in 2015, uh, and the Siam Prize in 2017. He was invited as a semi-plenary semi speaker to the 2010 International Congress of Mathematicians, and also in 2015 in the International Congress of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. And he also gave a talk in the 2017 IFAC World Congress. He is now Professor Emeritus at the University of, at the Sorbonne University, which was previously named Université Paris 6. And he is a member of the French Academy of Sciences and the Academia Europea. Please, Jean-Michel, uh, it's a pleasure to hear about your talk about stability and boundary stabilization of 1D hyperbolic system. Please. Jean-Michel? Uh. Do you hear me, Jean-Michel? Yes, thank you very much, Serge, yeah. for the presentation. First, I want to, to thank the, the organizer, Serge, Alexandre, Alain, and Alexandra for, for the invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to deliver this talk about stability and boundary stabilization of one diapabolic system. Do you? Tu dois utiliser affichage plein écran, Jean-Michel. Oui, mais je sais pas, j'ai un problème de son, ça revient, je sais pas. Enfin, bon. je, je reçois le son une minute après, quoi, enfin. Bon. Je sais pas si c'est normal. Je... Enfin... Bon, j'essaye de continuer tout oui, de même. Oui, oui, oui. Alors, so... oui. bon. Euh... Est-ce que c'est le même problème pour vous, en fait J'ai le son décalé. Je t'entends très bien, moi. Il n'y a pas de souci. Tu peux y aller. So, so I will, the outline of the talk is there. I will start with an example of 1D hyperbolic system, and we will move to the stabilization of 1D hyperbolic system without source terms. Oh. And then uh, we'll move to stabilization of 1D hyperbolic system without, with source term, and uh, I will an example of stabilization in optimal time for 1D hyperbolic system. Finally, I will say some few words about viscosity and robustness. So example of 1D hyperbolic systems. In fact, there are plenty of such a system. I will examples. The first example is about the river La Sambre and the navigable, navigable rivers like La Sambre. This is in Belgium. And you see there is a, the river, you see the map of the river. And there is also the river La Meuse, which you have worked also. 
faisait un pool, ça, ça, uh, number of the pool is denoted I, H I is the height of the water inside the pool, and V I is the velocity of the water inside the pool. So V is the horizontal velocity, V of T and X, and H of T and X is the height of the water at time T and position X. Then you have the Saint-Benoît equation. And the important point is on the right of the side. You usually one says that when you are after 50, the, the game is over. But here, here we see that uh, Arrêt de Saint-Benoît over his door when he was, which is very encouraging, yes. And the, the equations, there is two equations. The first one is the conservation of mass. And the second one, is the conservation of momentum. And the flow rate is a product of H and V. And you can write this equation in the form yt plus e of y y x equals zero, where y is HV. And if you look to the matrix E of y, it has only real eigenvalues, one, and they are distinct. One is positive in this case, and the other one is negative, at least if the flow is assumed to be subcritical, which means that V square is less than G times H. And there is also the case where there is slope and friction, and then you have some extra term, which is V of Y, and the equation takes the form YT plus C of Y, Y, X plus V of Y, and V of Y is called the source term, is given by two. So our hyperbolic system will be take the form yt plus e of y y x plus v of y. E is uh, the time, x is between 0 and L, and yt x is in Rn. And what is important is the, are the eigenvalues of A of y. So the eigenvalue of A of, of y are assumed to be distinct and real, and none of them are equal to 0. And there are many examples. The first one is a electric shunt, electrical transmission line, and this is a case where you have a linear system. The size of the n, the size of the system is now two. You have the current intensity and the voltage. This is y, y is iv, and the equation takes the form given by one, yt plus e of y, y, x plus b, y equals zero, where a and b are given by three. And if you look to the second value of A, they are all real. One is positive and the other one is negative. Another example, the shower. And N is of size three. You have H, V, and T. H is a piezometric head. V is the velocity of the water inside the shower. As a, and the, T is the temperature. Then it takes the form again, yt plus e of y, y, x plus p of y equals zero. And if you compute the eigenvalue of e of y, you find that there, there is three eigenvalues which are all real and distinct. One is, there are two which are positive and one is which is negative. Another example, the road traffic. So there are many models for for road traffic, and the one that I'm going to use is due to uh, open rascal in 2000. Then Y has two components, the density rho and the speed of V, the density of the car. And the, the equation again takes the form Yt plus E of Y, Yx plus B of Y equals zero. And the again value of A of Y are real and distinct. In fact, uh, uh, the sign also depend on the, if it is free traffic, you have two positive eigenvalues, and if it's congested traffic, one is positive and the other one is negative. And the form of, v, you see there are two functions, V0 and P, and they can be determined experimentally. As you, you see the, the V0 of O, which is determined experimentally. X exchangers and the N is equal to six, and so you have uh, six variables. It's like the two showers in some sense. So you have H1, V1, and T1, H2, V2, and T2. V1 and V2 are velocity, T1 and T2 are temperature, and H1 and H2 are piezometric heads. 
Again, it has the form yt plus a of y and plus a of y y x plus b of y equal to zero. And you can compute the again value of a and they are real and distinct, and none of them is equal to zero. There are many other examples, gas pipes, chromatography, musical wind instruments. And there are many examples that you can find in my book with Georges Bastin that I published in 2016. Now we are going to speak on what happened on the boundary of the domain. The domain is 0L, and on the boundary there is a place where you have the control. Here you see uh, a picture which is interesting because the gates, which is on the right, is under repair. And the, what is the control is the motion of the top of the lip. So in some sense, you can prescribe, thanks to the control, you can prescribe the flow rate. So this is the control law that you are going to fix. You are going to choose in order to get stabilization. There is also the gates on the river Lameuse, which is much larger. You see the picture. And this is the motion of the top of the, of the, top of the gate, which is the, the control loop. There is also the method of round metering in order to control the traffic flow. And now we are going to, to state our problem more precisely. So we have the, the equation yt plus a of y, yx is equal to zero. We are going to study first the case where there is no source term, there is no b of y. And we are interested in the equilibrium, which is zero. So after some change of variable, we assume that the a of zero is a diagonal matrices with positive entries, k positive entries, and n minus k negative entries. And we assume that the lambda i are all distinct from the lambda j if i is not equal to j. And the absolute value of capital lambda i is denoted lambda i. But yeah, this is the equation. Now comes uh, the boundary control, and it's in G. The equation one tells you that what is going inside the domain is a function of what is going outside the domain. And you see part of G is already fixed, while part of G, you can prescribe this part. So this, we, we are going to, to discuss about G. So the problem of stabilization is a very classical one. Here you have a, this is a movie, part of the movie Vertigo. And there is a James Stewart who has a wolf stick on the top of his finger, and he tried to stabilize the wolf stick. If he doesn't move the finger, the, the wolf stick is going to, to fall down. But by moving the wolf stick, he succeeds to avoid the, the, the fall of the wolf stick. And now, mathematically, we want to know if you have exponential stability locally. So we want to know if we have uh, the property two, why the norm of y of t uh, in some banner space x is less than c time exponential minus u t, the norm of the initial data. And in this talk, the, the standard space will be either CK space or Sobolev space HK, HK. And of course, uh, there is uh, the boundary condition, and the boundary condition are very important for, for this issue. So the problem of stability was, uh, in fact, um, uh, fixed by uh, Lyapunov in his thesis in 1892. First, he gives a, the definition of asymptotic stability, and he gives two important two key theorems. And the first one is about linearization. You have some equilibrium, and you are in finite dimension, and you have y dot is equal to x of y, y. And you have this equilibrium y. E. And you want to know if this point is asymptotically stable. And for that, you look to the matrix x prime of y e and to the eigenvalue of this matrix. And if uh, all the eigenvalues have a strictly negative real part, then the y e is exponentially stable. While if 
one of the eigen value has a strictly positive real part, then the equilibrium is unstable. This is a very important result that uh, Lyapunov proved in his thesis. In fact, this theorem was assumed to be true before Lyapunov. For example, in the fundamental paper uh, on governors by Maxwell in 1868, he already gives this condition. This condition, which is exponential stability, is mathematically equivalent to the condition that all the possible routes, this is the route which are real, and all the possible parts, this is the real part, of the impossible route, this is a route which are not real, of a certain equation. This is the equation which gives the eigenvalues of the matrix X prime of YE shall be negative. And in his thesis, uh, Lyapunov also gives a second Lyapunov theorem, which is uh, about uh, Lyapunov functions. He proves that uh, you have equivalence between asymptotic stability and the equation the existence of a Lyapunov function. A Lyapunov function is a function V, which satisfies the property one, such that V is decreasing along the flow of the trajectory of uh, the vector field X, Y, X of Y. And the picture is like this, and it tells you what this is a good notion for us. You see, you have the level set of the Lyapunov function. The vector field is pointing inside, and the key point is that uh, if you start uh, in the uh, large holes and you converge to the, to the origin, but of course, if there are some mistakes, the, the picture is modified a little bit and it's something like that. But still, you have this result that if you start in the large hole, maybe you arrive in the green hole and stay there, which is, which is a good notion for us because you have some robustness. Of course, we do not have the convergence to zero, but you are going to stay around zero, close to zero. So now we want to understand under which condition we have this exponential stability for our hyperbolic system. And we start with the case of a linear system in dimension one. So it takes the form yt plus lambda yx equals zero. For example, we can assume that lambda is positive. And the function, the, the boundary condition, which says that what is going inside is the function of what is going outside now takes the form yt0 is equal to kyt1, where k is a, positive, is a real number. In this case, you can compute explicitly the, the solution and you arrive to the formula 3, which tells you that y at time tn, tn is represented on this picture, is k to the power n minus 1, the value at time 0, at, at t1, 0. So then you have the exponential stability if and only if the absolute value of k is less than one. So you see in this case, the result is not depending on lambda, it depends only on k. You have exponential stability if and only if the absolute value of k is less than one. Now we move to the larger dimension. And for simplicity, we are going to assume that all the lambda i are positive and we look for a linear system. So we take the form yt plus lambda yx and yt0 is equal to kyt1. And then uh, we, first of all, I would like to mention that the Cauchy problem, the fact that it is well posed, in fact, is a consequence uh, of the lumer phillips theorem. The lumer phillips theorem tells you that if the initial data is in L2, then you have a unique solution of this problem, which is continuous uh, from the time with value in L2, 0, 1 to the power n. So now the question is under which condition you have the exponential stability. And for that, uh, you look only to the, you look to the eigenvalue of the operator lambda yx with the boundary condition. And you see the assumption on the, on, uh, the implication three, what is on the left, just uh, uh, the condition that z is an eigenvalue. So it's like in Yapunov, you and the two i are the inverse of the lambda i. So the, this is exactly the Yapunov theorem in some sense. Uh, you look to the eigenvalue, and if they have a real part which is less or equal than minus delta, then you have the exponential stability, and this is necessary and sufficient condition. So in practice, it's uh, not so easy to compute the the eigenvalues, but this is a very interesting criteria. It's very explicit. 
then uh, there is some problem because let us assume that, for example, lambda one is equal to one, lambda two is equal to two. So the tau, tau i, tau one is the inverse of lambda one, so this is one. Tau two is the inverse of lambda two, this is one divided by two. And you consider k, the boundary condition, is this matrix given by one. So it has four numbers and which are all equal, a, 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 and a. And then the condition, the previous conditions that I gave before, is just the condition that A belongs to the open interval minus one, one divided by two. So to, to summarize, you have exponential stability if, if and only if A it belongs to minus one, one divided by two. Now comes the problem. You see, if you consider lambda one, which is four times N divided by four times N plus one, and N is going to be a positive integer, which is very large. So, when n goes to infinity, lambda one goes to one. And the lambda two is four times n divided by two times n plus one. And when n goes to infinity, lambda two goes to two, which was the, the value that we have before. And then if we consider y1 and y2, which are given by three, there are solution of our system, yt plus lambda yx equals zero, if uh, the boundary condition is a matrix k minus one divided by two. And you see this solution does not converge to zero. So we have lost the exponential stability. And you see minus one divided by two is not on the boundary on the interval. You see the interval where you have exponential stability is minus one divided, one divided by two. So minus one divided by two is inside this interval. So you see that with small perturbation on the, long, the velocity, we lose the exponential stability. So this is very annoying if you want to do nonlinear system after. And also if you have some errors on the eigenvalues on the lambda i. So clearly there is a problem. And this problem was solved by Sikorsky, who proves that you have an exponential stability which is robust to small perturbation on the lambda i. If and only if we have this condition two, rho bar of k less than one, where rho bar of k is defined on the equation one. So this is the maximum of rho diagonal matrix AI theta one, AI theta n, k, where theta one, theta n are real numbers. So you have an explicit condition. You have exponential stability, which is robust with respect to small perturbation on the lambda i, if and only if we have this condition rho bar of k less than one. And the important point is that rho bar, you see the condition depends only on k. So it's like in dimension n equal one, the condition does not depend on lambda, it depends only on k. While the condition on the spectrum, which was there, is a condition of the spectrum, which was three, depends on the tau i, that is, depends on the lambda i. Here we have a condition which depends only on k. We have required to have robustness with respect to small perturbation on the lambda i, and finally you get the robustness with respect to all perturbation on the lambda i. So this is very, is very surprising, yes? If we go back to our example, with the matrix k a, which is given by one, if you compute rho bar of k, you find that it is equal to two times the absolute value of a. So rho bar of k a is less than one is equivalent to a is between minus one divided by two, one divided by two. And you remember our example, which was minus one divided by two, now is on the boundary. So it's why you have the problem. No, so now we, we would like to move to the nonlinear situation. That is the case where the, the matrix A of Y depends on Y. For that, we introduce some usual norm, the LP norm in RN, the LPT norm, the associated norm for the matrix, and we define rho P of K as the infimum of the norm, the P norm, delta K by delta minus one, where delta is a, a diagonal matrix with positive entries on the diagonal. So we have some explicit number, which is not so complicated to compute, rho p of k. And the conditions are going to depend on this rho p of k. 
The first result is that I want to mention is the result in the CK norm. For the CK norm, there is this, this uh, very interesting result due to Nitatien uh, and his school. He proves that uh, if rho infinity of G prime of zero is less than one, then the equilibrium is exponentially stable for the CK norm for every positive integer K. And the Nitatien proof relies on the use of direct estimate on the solution and the derivative along the characteristic curves. So this is a very important result. You see, we have the first condition, which is sufficient in order to have the exponential stability for the CK norm. Now we have to compare rho bar, rho bar, which is uh, the, the condition in order for the linear system, the linear situation, in order to have robustness with respect to small perturbation on the land eye. And rho infinity, and the first point is that rho bar of k is less or equal than rho infinity of k. And unfortunately, there are cases where we have a, a strict inequality already in dimension two. If we consider this matrix Ka, which is given, given on the slide, rho bar of Ka is equal to square root of two times A, while rho infinity of K is equal to two times A. So you have a strict inequality. And now the, the question is, rho infinity of K is a sufficient condition in order to have exponential stability for the CK norm. But the problem is that maybe rho bar of K is sufficient to have exponential stability for the CK norm. And the next result is about for the Sobolev norm. For the Sobolev norm, we get a different condition, which is given here. For the Sobolev norm, the sufficient condition is given by rho 2 g prime of zero less than one. So you see, we have a three condition, a three numbers, rho infinity, rho 2, and rho bar. And we want to compare them. And also, I would like to mention that this condition is also some DK estimate on the DK rate given by, you see, if nu is in interval given by one, then you have an exponential DK rate, which is at least equal to exponential minus nu t. And we want to compare these three numbers. And first, uh, rho bar of k is less or equal than rho two of k. And, but you have equality until the dimension five included. So now, we have equivalence between uh, exponential stability, the sufficient condition for exponential stability for the Sobolev norm and uh, the condition for exponential stability for the linear system, but which is robust with respect to small perturbation on the long line. So we have the same condition until the dimension five included. If you are in dimension six or larger, then you, this is, you have example where the inequality is strict. But Often, if you have uh, some uh, networks, which size is very important, there is very large. Often, this is uh, you have some block, which and the the question is uh, the, the size of a block. If the size of a block is of dimension less or equal than five, then it's still okay. And if you compare now the condition for for the HK norm and the CK norm, so the norm or classical functional space, then you have a first rho two of K is less or equal than rho infinity of K. And already in dimension two, you may have strict inequality. So for example, if you consider this, uh, this uh, KA, if rho two of KA is less than one, we know that we have exponential stability for the Sobolev spaces. Why we do not know if we have exponential stability for the CK norm. And in fact, it turns out to be false. This year, you have this result. You have an example, which uh, everything is very as explicit, where you have rho bar of k, which is equal to rho 2 infinity of rho 2 of k, which is less than 1. So you have exponential stability for the Sobolev norm. But rho infinity of k is larger than 1, but very close to 1, in fact. You, the, as, as close as you want, we want, but still we do not have exponential stability for the CK norm, so for any K, for any K. So you see, it's an example where the, the Banner space is very important to have the exponential stability, which is the, the what is the Banner space is very important for the exponential stability, and this is a very concrete example. 
Now I would like to give some uh, some hint about uh, the exponential stability in the HK norm. How do we? So I'm going to make it in, in H2. So we start. Uh, the, the approach is uh, relying on Yapunov uh, function as uh, presented at the beginning. So we we try to find the Yapunov function. We start with the case where the system is linear and. Uh, so we have A of Y is the matrix lambda, G of Y is equal to KY. And we define this V of Y. We compute V dot, the derivative of V along the trajectory. We do some integration by path. We use the fact that rho two of K is less than one. And then we, we can find a K, a Q, such that the boundary term is negative. Okay. And then we, we get the exponential stability. So you see, this is very simple. Uh, you, you, you get the result just by using a Lyapunov approach. And now we try to make it for the nonlinear case. So we, we start with the same, with the same V, and we compute V dot. Now there is uh, two new terms. So there is N1 and N2. N1 and N2, in some sense, they are cubic. They are cubic, but there is a problem is that there is a YX inside. And so there is, it's like y square y x, which is very bad because you have a derivative of y. And this is the same for n2. In order to console n1, this is not so complicated. We just q, take a q which depends on y in such a way that a y q y is equal to q y a y. And then n1 disappears, but still you have still n2. n2 is a, again a cubic term. But there is yx inside, so it's not very good. And in order to handle n2, we have to add um, some new term to the Lyapunov function, which depends on yx and yxx. This is done on the next slide. We take v, which is v1 plus v2 plus v3, where v1, v2, and v3 are given by 2, 3, and 4. q, r, and s are matrices which depends on y. They are positive and symmetric definite. And they satisfy this commutation. They satisfy some, some value at zero. And with this, we get exactly what we want. We get that V dot is less or equal to minus alpha V. So you get the exponential stability. And in fact, we have some estimate on alpha. So it gives you some estimate on the DT rate of the solution. So we have applied it to the river uh, La Sambre. And then in Belgium, so we, we have constructed some feedback law, and I would like to, to show you some animation. Uh, in front of, you, you see the, 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 the movie is divided in two parts. And in front of, the gates are not moving. And the initial data, which is a blue line, so the blue, the blue level, uh, is not an equilibrium. The, the equilibrium is given by the red line. This equilibrium, the red line, is already asymptotically stable, which means that even without any motion of the case, we are going to converge to the red line. Front of. And on the back, we use our feedback law, and as we are going to see, we get a much quicker convergence. Okay, you see on the back, the Convergence is much quicker, which is very important for application. So we have applied it to the river La, La Sambre and then to the river La Meuse, which is much larger. Now we consider the case where there is a source term, and source terms are very important for some application. For the rivers, it was not so important because uh, the slope is very is not very important. The river La Sambre and La Meuse. And, Belgium, and also the friction is not so important. So for the reverse, the application to the river was not very important to consider source term, but there are applications where it's important to consider source term. So let me recall what is the situation. Now we have this new term B of Y. And now the function, the equilibrium, is a solution of one and two with a yt, which is equal to zero. So now the, the solution may depend on x, in fact. It's not, a, it's not a constant function as it was previously. 
So we are going to study what we can do, and we start with a uh, dimension one. So, and we look for linear case. A linear case, so we have the equation one, yt plus standard x, yx plus gamma xy equal to zero, and x is between zero and one, and you have the boundary condition. Yt zero is u of t, and this is our feedback loop. And in order to get exponential stability, and in fact, we get stability in finite time, it is very simple. We just take u equals zero, and then you have more conversions to zero exponentially and even in finite time. Now let's move to the dimension two and linear system. So we have the control system, which is given by one, and you have the boundary condition. Y1 T0 is equal to Q Y2 T0, which is fixed. The Q is fixed. It's not part of the control. If you consider the reversal assemble and Lamus, part of the matrix G is already fixed. Part is our choice. And here our choice is U of T. And then we try to stabilize the system. First, we perform a change of variable. It's important for, the, for what we are going to see later on. We perform a change of variable, which is given by one, where phi one and phi two are given by two and three. And now the, if you perform this transformation, you get the system four. And you see what is interesting is now for the first line, for the first line, the term in Y1 tilde has disappeared. There is no term in Y1 tilde. And on the second line, there is no term in Y2 tilde, you see? If we go back to the equation previously, which is here, we have cancelled y1 x y1 and what delta two delta two delta two x y two. Okay. So let's consider this simple case, and we we want to stabilize by using some u of t, and we take u of t, which is k times y y two t one. If c is equal to zero, there is no problem. We can just assume that we take the absolute value of k less than one. In fact, u again equals zero is working. But if t is too large, the next slide shows you that there is no k which are working. If c is larger than or equal to two, two pi, then whatever is k, you do not have exponential stability. So this is very annoying because it's a case where you see the source term is really a great problem. You cannot make simple feedback in order to stabilize the system. And for, to avoid this problem, we, we are going to use a backstacking, backstacking, backstacking approach. Maybe I give you, uh, I will call you some uh, hint about what is backstepping. You have the system x dot is equal to f of x on y, y dot is equal to u. And in some sense, in order to stabilize this system, it's sufficient to stabilize the first system, which is x dot is equal to f of x and y, where y is the control. If you can stabilize this system, then you can stabilize the larger system, x dot is equal to f of x and y, y dot is equal to u. And there is some application to PDE, which, I, which is explained to in this book. And in, uh, there was in 2003, there was a very nice, um, a very nice example for the heat equation. They, they proved that, that the backstepping applied not on the discretization, but you apply it directly to the PDE. In fact, consists of transforming a given system into another one in such a way for the new system, it's easy to to stabilize it, we just take you the feedback equals zero. And the question is, is it possible to make it transform a first system into a second one, which is easy to stabilize? In this example, let me, okay, typically our system is one, okay? And we want to transform it in the system two. The system two is very easy to stabilize because as we mentioned before, it, we just take U equal capital U equal zero, and then we, we get stabilization, which is exponential and even in finite time. So the question, is it possible to transform the first system into the second one? And 
we prove that it is possible. This is a joint work with Vasquez and Yaroslav Plessy, just by using Volterra transformation of the second kind. Consider Y capital Y is equal to Y theta of X minus integral from zero to X, P of X and S, Y theta of S dS. So we are going to use capital P in order to solve the problem. The interest of using a Volterra transformation of the second kind is that these transformations are automatically invertible because of course it is important that the transformation is invertible because if it's not invertible, maybe Y is just zero and there is no, no issue for that. Does not give any result about Y tilde. So we want to have that the transformation Y tilde gives capital Y has to be invertible. So the unknown now is P, capital P. What is the equation in order that the, the first uh, system is transformed in the second one? And the, the equation that we get is just R1 equal R2 equal R3. And you see R3 equals zero. So R1, uh, R1 and R2 equal zero are boundary condition, while R3 is uh, uh, the condition inside the triangle the triangle S less or equal than X. And then it's possible to prove that in fact, at least if Q is not zero, it's possible to find P such that R1, R2 and R3 are zero. And now if we go back to the feedback law that we have constructed, then it, it takes the form which is given by, by five. Of, of course, it's not so, so easy to implement because it seems that we need to know the value of y1 tilde and y2 tilde, not, on the, not only on the boundary, but on the full interval. But for that, we can construct observer. And even if we measure only what happened on the boundary, we have some estimates which are sufficient in order to, to, to use this method. We use the method of controller observer method strategy. If, if Q equals zero, it is not working. The, there is no there is no R, there is no P such that R1, R2, and R3 is equal to zero. Certainly, points that we cannot prove the existence, there is no such a P. And the idea is then to, to modify the target system. The target system, instead of one, now we have uh, this target system where there is a G of X, Y2, T0. And then uh, the, you see the, the design and the G is part of the unknown. There is not only P, capital P, there is also G. And it's possible to prove that there exists capital P and G, such that you can transform the system Y tilde into the system capital Y, which is given by two. Okay, so some extension. First, it's possible to consider the nonlinear case. Then there is this problem that uh, I mentioned already that the feedback that we, we propose depends not only on the value of Y at the boundary, but inside the interval, but we can construct an observer. And the construction of the observer relies again on the path shaping approach and it's possible to get that the full system with the observer, you get exponential stability. And there is some extension also to n times n system by Elbidio, uh, Vasquez and Christic, by also Longu, Dibidio, Longu also, uh, Christic and Vasquez. And, and we work also on this with uh, Waimin and Guyen. And what I would like to mention is that the key point um, in this case, is to try to find what is a good target system. That's so easy. In, exam in dimension two, it was not complicated, except the case Q equals zero. But in dimension larger, it's much more complicated. I also would like to mention, for example, that for a cost vector Vries equation, is controllable. It's still interesting to use this backstepping approach, except that we cannot use Volterra transformation of the second kind we have to use more general transformation. And then the key point is to prove that this transformation leads to uh, something which is invertible. And for that, you have equivalence between controllability and the fact and the existence of this transformation. Now I would like to, to say some few words about uh, stabilization in optimal time when there is no source terms. 
So we start with the simplest case. The simplest case is dimension one. First, I would like to say again that it is interesting for application to consider what is called rapid stabilization. This is what we use on the river La Sambre and La Meuse. I present again, you see on the back, we use our feedback law and we get a much quicker convergence. And the question that we want to, to study now, what is the best uh, possible convergence that we can get? This is a case where we may have a stabilization in finite time, not only exponential, but in finite time. And then the question is, what is the optimal time? What is the smallest time in order to have a feedback law which leads you to a stabilization in this time? So if we consider the simplest case, y t minus lambda y x equals zero, then you have the controllability in the time, which is one divided by lambda, and you can get also the stabilization the same time just by taking u equals zero. You take u equals zero and you get stabilization in the time which is optimal, which is one divided by lambda. So the picture is like this, you see, on the, the, on the, on the, the line with slope one, or one divided by lambda, in fact, uh, the, the y is constant, and you see on the blue line, and the picture is more like this. You see, when you are in the blue, you, we use the control, the feedback law, which is zero. When you are in the blue, it means that whatever is the initial data, if you are in the blue, then you will get zero in, in the blue. If you are in the red, it means that uh, there is some initial data, but that the, the value at the points that you consider in the right part will not be equal to zero. Okay. Now we have to move to the dimension two. So we, we consider this equation still linear. We have the boundary condition, y1 t0 is equal to a y2 zero, y2 t1 is equal to u1 of t. So the control is u1 of t. And then uh, you consider tau i is one divided by lambda i. So what is the result about the controllability? It's the, this result, if a is not z equal to zero, this system is controllable, that you, you can reach starting from any state, you can reach any state where you want, if the time is at least equal to t zero, and this is the optimal time. Zero is two one plus two two if a is not equal to zero. And this is the maximum between two one and two two if a is equal to zero. What about stabilization? This is controllability. But stabilization, you give also, you, you, st you we, st we study again the, the feedback law, u equals zero. And you can see this picture again. If you are in the blue, the point, you take a point in the blue, whatever is initial data, at that point, you will get zero. If you are a point in the red, it means that there is some initial data such that at that point you will not get zero. So this is y1, y2, and you get this. And again, this is uh, the case a equals zero. And if you take a not equal to zero, you get this. And this is again the optimal time. That is, again, if you take u equals zero, you arrive to, to zero in the optimal time. So we have two examples. We are doing nothing. That is taking u equals zero, you will get uh, zero in the optimal time. So if this is your idea. Maybe doing nothing is the best things to do. This is summarized in this uh, cartoon. Maybe it, but unfortunately, as we are going to see already in dimension three, doing nothing is not the best thing. So our example is in dimension three, still linear. You have two positive, one positive again value and two are negatives. The so control there's two components, u1 and u2. And y1 t0 is equal to a y y2 t0 plus b y3 t0. A and b are fixed. And what about the controllability? It depends a lot on the value of a and b. You consider tau i, which is the inverse of lambda i. And then the, the controllability is given here. You have this time t1 equals to 1 plus to 2. And if a is not 0 and b equals to 0, this time t1 is optimal for the controllability. If you want to reach 0 by using uh, open loop control, that is a control which depends on the initial data. 
But if B is not zero, that was proved by Weck and uh, U, that uh, this is not the optimal time. You can make it in smaller time, and the time T0, which is the maximum of T1 plus T3 and T2. And this is strictly less than T1. And we are going to see that we can make it also, we can also get the, the stabilization in time T0 by a feedback loop. And for that, the idea is rather simple. You consider, you see, you want, you have y1 t0, which is equal to a y2 t0 plus b y3 t0. And the problem is y1. This is the last variable which is going to go to zero. So we start by, we, we want to have y1 t0 equal to zero. So that is, we want what a y2 t0 plus b y3 t0 equal to zero. And we, we follow the characteristic line and we get that what we want to be equal to zero is equal to a y2 t minus to 3, to 3 divided by to 2 plus b y3 minus to 3 1. So we just want that this right hand side has to be equal to zero. And instead of taking t minus to 3, we just replace it by t and we get the feedback loop. You see? So we take u1 equals zero and u2 is y3 t1. U take minus a divided by b, b, y2, t, to 3 divided by to 2. Then we have this, uh, all this formula, but it can be summarized with, uh, with uh, this, uh, this picture. This is a y1, y1, you see. Again, well, if you have a point in the blue part, uh, it means that whatever is the initial data, at that point, you will get zero. If you have a point in the red part, it means that there is some initial data such that you will not get zero at that point with the feedback loss that we choose. So this is a picture for Y1, the picture for Y2, the picture for Y3, and then you can draw the two, three pictures and you get the picture for Y. And you see, you will get zero in the, at the time to three plus to one, which is smaller than to two plus to one, which is the time that you get if you take U equals zero. If you take u equals zero, which is on the right, then you will get zero in, to, in the time to two plus to one instead of the time to three plus to one. And to three plus to one is less or equals, is strictly less than to two plus to one. So you see, this is a case where doing no things that is taking u equals zero is not the, the best things to do. You have to prepare the future in some sense. You have to prepare the future, which is the future is to try to get uh, y1 equals zero. And so you you prepare in order to have y1 equal to zero as soon as possible. So we can make it for general cases. I just to show, show you some, uh, this is uh, one of the last slides. You have this time e zero. You have some assumption on B. The B is the matrix, uh, which is uh, related to what happened on the boundary. And then we can get that. Uh, we can get with the feedback law, you can get zero in the optimal time. And you can also make it, this is more complicated, we can make it in the case of a nonlinear hyperbolic system. And maybe I want to just to mention a last uh, problem, which is uh, very interesting, which is uh, the case where you have uh, the problem of robustness with respect to a very small error on the land line. It seems that the feedback those that we present here are not so robust with respect to small perturbation on the lambda i. And that will be very interesting to improve the robustness in order to have something which is better in practical situation. Okay, I think I am going to stop here and thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you, Jean-Michel. Bravo. Well, merci. Is there any questions or remark? Yeah, Christian. I know I was just uh, um, thanking for the talk. Didn't want to ask a question. Oh, okay, sorry, excuse me. Yeah. So uh, maybe I have one question. Uh, so in your examples uh, from the river La Meuse, you always consider the case where we have only in a sense one interval, yeah? So, so only one dem or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. 
Could, could you consider the case or in the sense of a, of a real network where you would have different uh, gates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an interesting question. Thank you, Serge, for uh, I should have mentioned this. In fact, uh, uh, you, you, the, the problem that we are looking at, uh, in fact, there are many posts. Maybe I can go back to the, to the, let me go back to the. Yeah, to the pictures. Yeah, 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 this is very interesting. You see, in fact, uh, you see, for the river La, La, Me, La Sam, for example, there are eight gates, eight uh, gates. Yes. That the dimension N, the dimension N, in fact, is is uh, two times eight. So the dimension of the system is uh, 16, in fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's a case where uh, you still have row two of K is, less, is equal to row bar of K because a, the, the system is a block, block diagonal. Mm -hmm. And this, size of the block is uh, is two. So you, you can, this is again where a case where you have row two of K, which is equal to uh, row bar of K. Uh, of course, you, 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 I think that there will be some problem if uh, there is some loop, there is some loop, but uh, uh, we, we, in the river that we consider La Sambre and La Meuse, there was no loop, no loop. Mm -hmm. but, but that would be interesting to consider the case of where there is a loop here. Okay, but, but from your picture, there, I also have another question. You see, we can, could you consider the case where you consider all together the Sambre and the Meuse together, because then you have a, a sort of network, yeah, a real network yeah, in the sense. Yeah. No, 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 it's possible. A, a, yeah. why, a sort of uh, why, yeah. This is very interesting question again. Uh, you can, in fact, we consider the river La Meuse. Huh? But there is also a connection. I don't know if we can see the mouse. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, at that point. Yeah, yeah. Namur. I think it is at Namur. Yeah. Namur. So <laughs> yes, exactly. This is Namur. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we 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 consider also this case. Yes, it's possible to consider the case. What we cannot do, I think, for the moment, is a case of a loop. Huh? Case of a loop, which uh, there is a problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But here but, there is no loop. Uh, yes, it's exactly it's time, time yeah, yeah, But uh, at that point, you what what kind of boundary conditions you 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 uh, met? you you don't consider uh, that it's a gate? Fact, we, but I don't remember. We we we. Uh, I, I don't remember precisely what we did here. Uh, I think there is, there was a problem with we, we simplify a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, this is a difficult, uh, yeah, yeah. Especially, in fact, for, for road traffic. This is the case for road, yeah, yeah. road traffic yeah, yeah. is even more, you it's see. Similar. Yeah, yeah. The, for the case for the road traffic, here there is some difficulty also yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, yeah, for yeah. the boundary condition. And there was yeah, some yeah. work, I think, by, uh, but maybe by, the, by other people also. By, by uh, the group of and, Alexandre Bayen about what is uh, the good condition on here? What is the boundary the condition? Vertex. Here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, uh, to, to put the right uh, conditions at, the, at that vertex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Other questions or remarks? So I, I have one question, if I may. Yes, oh, or oh, oh, actually, two questions. So, so th thank you, Jean-Michel, for the nice talk and also this uh, illustration with uh, Namur. It's uh, I think it's the first time <laughs> I, I I attend a talk with about Namur. So uh, my, my first question is very naive and just for curiosity. So was it implemented in real life, or is it are there some challenges that that should be uh, overcome to 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 be so? Uh, I don't know if I'm clear on my question. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, no, it's yes. no, no, it's implemented in, uh, thank you very much for the question. It's implemented in real life, yes. The, okay. the river La Sambre, first we do, we did La Sambre, and then we, we, we moved to La Meuse, and we, it's implemented, yes, it's working very well. 
Uh, you see, the, it improves the, the, the question of uh, what is very important is the height of the water, because the height of the water, you have to control it very precisely. And we, we have a much better uh, the, 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 the motion of the, the height of the water is much smaller than it, than it was before. Yes, that was a uh, that was work, that was work, work very well. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, and maybe uh, another question, if if I can. At some point, you mentioned that you we need to measure um, the 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 state uh, along the the, the wall uh, on the wall length between zero and L, and so you, you would use an observer uh, controller approach. And uh, it, does it? Um, uh, is it an issue for uh, performances and uh, for, for the, uh, the the accuracy or the yeah. is it the performance of the controller or or is it uh, insignificant? Insignificant. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is a, this is a, uh, uh, first I, I want to mention that in the case of the river La Sambre and La Meuse, we do not use this approach because uh, the slope and the friction was too small and there was no need to consider this source term B of Y. But uh, this is what the question that you, you raise is very important because uh, the, the question, the problem is uh, the, the robustness, the robustness. Uh, you, we, we get a, a theoretical result with the backstepping approach. That is, we, we get that, um, we get the exponential stability of the controller plus the observer. But the problem is that uh, we are not sure that this is robust with respect to, to small perturbation on the, the velocity. Uh, we, that was uh, the part that I want to, it was, uh, and the, the last part of the talk was on this, in fact, uh, because the idea is that maybe it's not robust. Uh, maybe it's not robust with respect. Uh, was, yeah. yeah, maybe it's not robust with respect to small perturbation on the land eye, but we expect that uh, with some viscosity, you still mm. have the robustness with respect to small perturbation. This mm. is a, uh, the case with, which is here. If, you see, if you have uh, this theta, which is a small viscosity, if you do not have the small viscosity, then you have the observer y2 at uh, y2x with the boundary condition. It's a case where you have uh, exponential stability, but it's not robust with respect to small perturbation on the V. But if you add some viscosity, then we have uh, the robustness again with respect to small perturbation on the V. So our hope is that it's the same with the backstepping approach because mm. practice um, there is al always a small viscosity and maybe with a small viscosity we keep the robustness with respect to small perturbation on the speed of propagation V. Is it? Uh, but it, we we did not do it for the backstepping. We we did it for this uh, simple example. We get some robustness because when uh, this is a case where. It, when it equals zero, you have exponential stability, and even you have stability in finite time, but it's not robust with small perturbation on the V. But with eta, maybe you can uh, you can show that the, the maximal abscissa of, uh, if you consider the, the eigenvalue, yeah, the, you have uh, some eigenvalue, which is this line, uh, which is minus V, the real part is the minus V logarithm of two, and then, uh, which means that even if the, the, you see, this is whatever is eta, which is assumed to be small. So this is, if eta is very small, but not zero, you still have some, uh, some uh, exponential PK rate, which is independent of eta in some sense. Mm -hmm. And then we, if eta fixed, then you have some robustness with respect to small perturbation and V. Yes, this is what is explained here. So we hope that it is the same for the backstepping, but we are not able to prove it for the moment. Thank you very much for the very important question. Thank you. Thank you.
So is there other comments? So it seems not, the, it is not the case. So I, I propose to thanks again, Jean-Michel. And uh, I don't know, maybe Marqueta wants to say something for the next uh, Lumos lectures. I don't know if this, no. I mean, or, or which group will organize it next time? Uh, okay, so first, thank thank to Professor Jean Michel Coron again for a nice talk. Uh, and the next uh, talk will be in autumn. Okay. Uh, organized by uh, Working Group Four. Okay. So I think they have a speaker, but it's not confirmed yet.